In this video, we are going to talk about paint brushes. This is a ridiculous amount of paint brushes. This is my collection that I've had since high school. So I've had them for quite a long time. If you take good care of them, you will have them forever. Let's talk about the different kinds and the different effects that each brush can create. In this video, I won't get into the differences between synthetic or natural hair brushes. In my classroom, I primarily use synthetic brushes. If you are buying your own brushes or have a variety in your collection, look up the best brushes for the type of paint you are using. First, let's look at the anatomy of a paintbrush. The top of the bristles or hair is the toe, followed by the belly and heel. The ferrule is the metal part that holds the bristles and handle together. Hold the brush firmly, but not tightly gripping toward the back of the handle. I'm choked up more on my brushes in this demo, holding them closer to the ferrule than I usually do. I prefer standing up or painting with my piece propped up, but my setup in this video doesn't allow for that with my camera angle and paper laying flat on the table. These are all of my flat brushes. As you can see, the bigger the number, this is a 60, the bigger the brush. This is a number six. So you can see the difference. These brushes are bristle brushes. I only use these for oil painting. This is a wash brush that I only use for watercolor. That way it stays really clean. And these bristles are best for applying washes. Other brushes like these two which I've had since high school, you can see that the bristles are kind of going outward. There's also quite a bit of paint here where the hair is going into the ferrule compared to this brush, which is brand new, that's kind of going inward a little bit. So it's really important to take care of your brushes and to clean them so that you get those nice clean edges. A flat brush obviously is flat here at the toe and from the side, it's skinny, so it can create a lot of different effects. Let's take a look. I'm going to create a variety of marks with different brushes. I will use similar brush strokes with each of the brushes I test for consistency. I'm using tempera paint on 80 pound mixed media paper. You could also use watercolor or acrylic for these explorations. I'm starting with a number 18 flat brush. You could use a half inch or three quarter inch. First, load up the brush as much as possible with your paint. Using the wide part of the brush, make one confident brush stroke across the page. Next, use the narrow edge of the brush, again making one brush stroke across the page to make a thin line. Painting wavy lines allows you to see the variation of the upstroke and downstroke. The toe of the brush can also create various marks. Rather than drawing straight lines, it can be easier to use the width of the brush to make lines. Using the brush at an angle can also create different edge quality. Explore with a couple more ways to use your brush. I want to clarify on the flat brushes. We have flat brushes and you may also see something called a bright brush. A bright brush, you can see the difference is um, shorter. It's good for shorter kind of brush strokes, also scrubbing or scumbling more so than a flat brush, which can be used for kind of smoother application of paint. Some flat brushes are even really long, like this one here. So you can see the difference between bright and flat. This is my collection of round brushes. Again, with round brushes, the bigger the number, the bigger the brush. This is a number eight brush. It's pretty standard cheap school brush. This is good for watercolor. It's a full belly brush, natural hair. This brush is also good for ceramic glazing. These two brushes are small detail round brushes, triple zero, very, very small. Sometimes triple zero is represented with a three slash zero. And again, these are my oil brushes that are very bristly. This is a red sable, which is good for oil painting, a more expensive kind of brush. And this is a golden tacklon brush, which is synthetic and good for acrylic painting. Let's see what these can do. The full belly brush is harder to control. It's better used for washes rather than lines. 
You may not be able to tell from the video, but the natural and the synthetic brushes do have different responses in terms of paint load and spring from the bristles. These are angle brushes, just like the name sounds. They're angled here at the toe and also flat, so you can envision getting a lot of different kind of line quality and effects with these brushes. Let's take a look. I honestly don't use angle brushes very often. Consider how you can incorporate using these in your paintings. These are filbert brushes. Filbert brushes are round at the toe, like this, and they're pretty thin this way. So they're versatile for creating a lot of different effects. Let's see what these can do. A filbert brush can create a lot of versatile marks. My go-to brush is usually a flat brush, but lately I've been using filbert brushes more. It's kind of a preference of what you're painting and what you're used to. Fan brushes are more a special effect kind of brushes. I honestly don't use these very often, but you can get a lot of really great textures with these brushes. And this is a liner brush. I honestly don't use this one very much either. It's very long, but it can create a lot of great effects for outlining and highlighting and lettering. Fan brushes aren't really meant for long sweeping lines, but for consistency, I tried it out. Fan brushes create great textures for foliage or soft blending. I rarely use liner or script brushes, however, I did really like the effects that this created and I may use them for some hand lettering projects. Next, let's get into some applications of using these brushes by painting shapes and forms. Choose the appropriate size and type of brush based on what you're painting. Numbers of brushes, unfortunately, are not standard. I have a number eight filbert that is fairly small and a number four filbert that is larger. For this demo, I'm going to use a number six round, a number eight small filbert, a quarter inch angle, and a number six flat brush to determine which brush I like best to paint a circle and a cube. You may want to try out some other brushes such as a smaller filbert and a larger flat brush. I'm beginning by using a number six round brush. This was very awkward to use to fill in my shape evenly. The number eight dynasty filbert was easy to control and fill in my shape. The quarter inch angle was okay, but the angle of the toe made it challenging to fill in. The number six flat brush was a little too small to fill in my shape evenly. Additionally, I also used a number 12 flat brush since this is my go-to size brush. The other filbert I'm using is actually a number four, but it is larger than my number eight. This brush also worked really well for my circle. Moving on to the cubes, first paint a square as the face of your form. Again, I'm starting with a number six round brush, which I found difficult to fill in. As expected, the filbert brush was challenging to use to make sharp corners. The angle brush worked fairly well, but again, it's just not my personal favorite type of brush. The number six flat brush worked well, but it's a little bit too small to fill in the face easily. Finally, I'm testing a three quarter inch brush. And this ended up being my personal preference for blocking in larger areas as well as the number six. Next, I'm going to go back to complete the top of the cubes with a light blue. I liked the angle brush for the top since it's a smaller area and I needed an angle for the edge. The number six brush worked well and I used this brush for the top of my last cube since a three quarter inch brush would be way too large. Lastly, I'm finishing the side of the cube with a dark blue. It looks black here, but it's actually a dark shade of blue. The dark side was similar to fill in as the top, so I preferred the angle brush and the number six brush. 
Overall, I found the smaller filbert to be best to use for my circle and the number six and three quarter inch brushes to be best for the cube. You probably guess I'm not a huge fan of round brushes. They're great for larger washes, but I generally don't use them often. And here I am comparing my number eight filbert, which is actually smaller than my number four filbert, which is bigger. Again, different brands have different sizing systems. If I could only have one paintbrush to use for the rest of my life, it would be a number 12 flat brush. As you can see, this one's gotten a lot of love. I just find for when I'm painting, I use this one the most. I recently got some new friends for it. These two, the number 18 and the number six. My number 12 might need an upgrade soon. Depending on your painting style, you might have another favorite paintbrush. As you learned, every paintbrush has different characteristics and can do different things. Even one paintbrush in itself has a lot of variety to get different types of mark making and line quality. By practicing the techniques with these different paintbrushes, you will gain confidence not only in choosing the best brush for what you're painting, but also you'll gain confidence in your painting overall. Happy painting!